These guys in the Bible were no different than you. They were no different than you. They struggled, they failed, they fell. Peter, the Apostle Peter, who is considered to have founded the Catholic Church. Well, back then it wasn't the Catholic Church, it was just the church. But Peter, a very, very short time before Jesus' death, Oh, Lord, I'm gonna, I would do anything for you. I would die for you. I would defend you, and I would go to the grave with you. And Jesus is like, oh, really? Well, let me tell you what you're going to do, brave man. You're going to say you never knew me. You're going to deny that you even knew me. You've traveled with me for three years. You've seen me do miracles. And when the pressure's on, you're going to tell people, I don't even know who he is. Uh -huh. And that's exactly what he did. Doesn't sound like a oh I am Peter. <laughs> Does it? It sounds like a guy. It sounds like a guy just like us. Who stumbles and falls, rises, fails. Those are the people that will inspire you in your daily life. Those are the people that will give you strength. That's why this book is powerful. Because it's made up of people just like you and me. Who, who, who fell in love with God the way he was in love with them and, and, and had this passionate desire to do, to do what he wanted them to do with their lives. Didn't mean they were perfect any more than we are. So let me encourage you in just a couple of ways. Number one, read the Bible for yourself. Know what it says for yourself. It's empowering. It's empowering that no one can tell you, you know, the Bible says blah, blah, and you go, no, it doesn't. I've read it. <laughs> it doesn't say that. There are a lot of people out there that would have you, would try to convince you and have you hop on board some cause thinking that it's, you know. I mean, I can't even imagine the mentality of somebody who would think that, who would say God told them to bomb an abortion clinic and kill Innocent people. I mean, you know, you know what I'm saying? No, I promise you, God didn't tell them to bomb some clinic. But people that don't know any better may think that, well, maybe that says it says somewhere in the Bible to do something like that. You know, you don't know. You wouldn't know unless you read it for yourself. Don't even listen to what I say if it's not in here. If you find, when you start reading this, if you find that that anything I've said isn't consistent with what's in here, forget what I said. Because what I say is not important. Read it for yourself, number one. Number two, at some point very soon, maybe this evening, I want you to consider a very, very simple truth, and that is that Jesus came to pay the price for you and me that we could not pay. I, I was... I, how, some of you guys are part of the Ranger, Risenbull Rangers Bible study. We actually have an online weekly Bible study. And I, last week, we, I was in there answering some questions. And, and I was talking about salvation in Jesus Christ. And a day later, somebody wrote me, some girl that was in the, that was in the, uh, it was in the, the Bible study that night, wrote me and she said, I think I figured out what you mean by salvation in Jesus Christ. I think you mean being a good person and doing the best you can and doing good deeds and 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 then you'll get to heaven. No. I couldn't mean anything more opposite than that. This is the simple the simple fact of the matter, okay? We're not talking about religion. You hear me? I didn't say religion, did I? We're not talking about religion. This is the way it works, you guys. Very simply, let me just set it out. And if, if you believe it, maybe something in your heart goes, yeah, that sounds about right. That's the Holy Spirit of God saying, that's right, he's talking to you. This is the way it works. God created man. God, God created man for fellowship. He created you in his image for relationship with you. 
But when mankind was given free will because, hey, what fun is it to have somebody worship you who doesn't, who has to, who's forced to, right? I mean, if you were only my friend because I paid you or because I ripped out the part of your brain that, that, that made you able to decide who you were going to have as friends, you had to be my friend, what joy do I get in that? There's no joy in that. She has to. She has to. She has no choice. God knows that. God knows there's no joy in having a relationship with people that, that don't choose to have a relationship with you. That's why he didn't make you robots. He didn't make us cyborgs. We have a choice. He created us with that choice. So we have the choice. And guess what we chose? Look at the world around you. We chose our own way. We chose a way completely irregardless of him. And we've got a pretty ugly world to show for it. Started a long time ago, and it just it's passed down through the generations. Let me ask you a question. Any parents in the room? Did you have to teach your children to lie? Do you have to teach your kids to take things that don't belong to them when they were little? Of course not. You know why? Because it's in, it's in us all. It's part of our makeup. We can't get away from it. That's the, it's a, it's a, it's a big religious word. That's, this is the word. That's the sin nature that is <coughs> woven into our being. We can't do anything about it. It's impossible. You could be a good person your whole life. But who you are inside, you can't change. Not to mention the fact that you couldn't live a perfect life. Nobody can. If you say you can, then you've got a big problem. Um, and we all know that we don't. If we're all honest with ourselves, we know that we fall real short of the mark. Here's the deal. God is perfect. He's holy. He is so far beyond what we are, we can't even begin to describe it. He created us perfect to have fellowship with him and gave us free choice. And when we chose not to, not to obey him, not to follow him, sin uh, was, was, was uh, uh, sin came into our, into our humanity and it was passed down through every generation. So everyone who's ever lived is a sinner. And because of that sin, we are separated from God. Sin is a wall that goes up between you and God. And you, there is no getting by it. It's a chasm. Imagine it as a chasm. And there's no jumping across. There's nothing you could build to get over there. Nothing. God knows that. God knows that there's nothing you can do to bridge that gap. Here's the good news. So he did it. He bridged the gap for us. He sent his only son, the only perfect sacrifice, the only one who could pay that price to break that wall down, the only one who could build that bridge across that chasm. He paid the price. Such was his desire to have you back in his family that he paid the price for you. Did I say religion? Just talking about relationship. Talking about a price that was paid so that you guys could be back in his family where you were meant to be all along. That's, that's the story, you guys. That's the simple truth of it all. People have made a lot more out of it. People have built entire corporations and, and huge organizations on it. But that's the simple truth of it right there.